So uh, today we wanted to introduce the new chief of police for the city of Martinsburg, Mr. Knowles, mayor of the city. Good morning, and thanks for coming in. Oh, good morning, and thank you for not letting me get peppered today about Lambertville. <laughs> I'm here for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, here for you. Could you please introduce the new yes, City of Martinsburg you know Chief it, of Police? It, it, it's an honor for me to introduce uh, Aaron Gibbons as the new Chief of Police of the City of Martinsburg. I've known Aaron for now for about 15 years. Uh, one of the first times that I had an interaction or, or actually a ride along with uh, the police was about 15 years ago, and it was with Aaron. And, and what I had uh, what I had seen at that point, uh, I, I had always held him as a high standard as a police officer. I, I always felt he was one of the best police officers I ever met. The way he interacts with individuals on the street, people that may be homeless or down and out, people that they've had problems with. He, he knows them by their first name and, and they all respect him. So I'm really, really pleased to, to introduce Aaron to you to be able to carry on uh, the protection of the city of Martinsburg. Thank you, Kevin, I appreciate that very much. Aaron, you're you always sp- speak so highly. Aaron. That's great. <laughs> you I were sworn it. in Friday morning. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, tell us about your journey in the MPD all the way up to now, Chief of Police. Well, I started 17 years ago, and, and uh, I've always been really appreciative of the fact that I could deal with the community and the response I got back from the community as a police officer. Um, I always thought that was really important to me, uh, very in particular. Um, Went up through through uh, the police force, met a lot of great people, um, got a lot of engagement out of patrol staff, um, especially when it came up to this position. Uh, made deputy chief in uh, 2020, and that was right at the time of COVID. So uh, that was that was kind of a shock to to everybody, including myself, when we had to adjust our protocols and how we how we actually police. There were a lot of um, adjustments that came in as far as how you dealt with individuals, how your traffic stops were going to happen, how much, you know, just simply getting out with somebody out here on the street during the COVID um, epidemic changed as far as you made, you had to make sure that they were masked up all the time. Everybody was gloved up. You had to take extra precautions when you had somebody incarcerated um, when you were processing them so it was a big it was a big shell shock for all of us Um, up through deputy chief um, George chief of police Um, I'm actually surprised you know he might get bored and he always said he had a voice for radio so he may be joining you here soon enough (laughs) he's going to be looking for a job here soon but um, he spoke very highly of me the mayor did as well we went through the entire uh, application process for the chief of police and uh, I'll I'll be honest this application process for the chief of police was um, very thorough Um, they really went they really put us through the guns uh, for this position especially with everything that's going on in the in the nation as far as law enforcement goes today Kevin, how many people were considered for the position? Well, we, we interviewed eight people. Uh, we had, I believe, uh, four uh, external and four internal. And uh, then we had some second-round interviews, too, because it was a, a very uh, – every one of them was very well qualified. Uh, every one of them had something that they brought to the table. Uh, we just felt that, uh, you know, Aaron at, at this point would be the, the best person possible for us to move forward as a city to, to be able to um, – bring accountability to our police force to be able to have um, the, the community to, to buy in on, on someone here locally. And, and Aaron has shown over and over again that uh, his uh, commitment to the community, his wife owns uh, everything cheesecake. So next time he's on, he should be bringing cheesecake. I don't see any samples yeah, at all. I don't, I, don't see, I, I don't see any today. But I knew it just, would come up. Just for, just for future up. reference. I don't see a sample <laughs> anywhere. Do you, Bill? <laughs> no, no, I was hoping, though. <laughs> oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Yeah, I've, I've gained the name Cheap Cheesecake. <laughs> Cheap Cake. Is what, is Cheap what, Cake, I like yeah, that. They brought it up during the, uh, the conference the other day. But. Kevin, what separated Aaron from everybody else? Well, again, it was his involvement, the way he interacts with individuals. I mean, those are firsthand things that we've had, the firsthand knowledge that we all have had that uh, we wouldn't have with that outside candidate. And you know, you're, you're always taking a shot in the dark if you're taking somebody in from the outside, no matter how qualified they look on paper and, and no matter how well they interview. But, uh, again, I, I think the confidence amongst the, the staff and myself was that we, we knew Aaron. 
Uh, we knew what he stood for. We knew what he could bring to the table if given the reins. You know, he's never had the reins, or he hasn't been able to to implement that stuff on his own. So uh, he came to us with a with a nice plan on that second interview of what he plans on doing and how he plans on running the force. And, and that second interview is the one that sold it uh, on everybody. Because to be quite honest, we told him uh, his first interview didn't go too well. Does the city council have to vote on this to make it final, or is this a done deal and in process? It, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. When I say his, his interview didn't go, it wasn't the best the first time around is because I, I believe at the time he just felt that we all knew him and all that, and we just wanted to know a little bit more about him. And it, that second time around, boy, he really sold it. Yeah, it was all part of my plan. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Rob asked a question, and you answer it confused me. Uh, does the city the city council vote for no. approval? They do not. So this is a decision made by city manager? Sit, the, the city manager has the, um, the say – on uh, who, who he hires for his uh, department heads. Uh, I was part of that process. Uh, the city council was not part of that. I'm part of that process, but the city council wasn't. So you, you along with Mark Baldwin, you, the two of you it was it was a, It was a four-person uh, uh, interview. Okay. Uh, it was myself, Mark Baldwin, Andy Blake, and Ken Sayre. Between the four of us, we worked uh, through the whole process and – it was a mutual agreement amongst everybody that uh, Aaron would be the per pick for, for police chief. So, Chief, you brought a plan on what you plan on doing. What was the plan on what you plan on doing? <laughs> What's the plan on what I plan on? <laughs> That's doing? what Kevin mentioned. That you know, I can't. I can't really be. Uh, I don't think anybody in the law enforcement community can be ignorant to the fact of what's going on around us today. And I think setting a clear you know, expectations as far as a police force goes, it has to be a very high priority. Um, I have very clear expectations, a very clear focus. Um, you have to get, you have to get everybody on board. Are we talking personnel management? Um, specifically personnel management, okay. because that's what affects everything out in the community mm -hmm. itself. Um, so, you know, I, I've tossed these ideas around in my head for a really long time and I was hoping that I would get the uh, the honor of actually serving the community as the chief of police. And I'm glad that, you know, they, they came up with me as their decision. Um, but setting a clear focus as far as personnel management in the department, I think, sets the tone for the entire community itself or how you were viewed in the community itself. Um, so you have, you know, your expectations, what you expect each member of the department to follow. Um, disciplinary procedures, you have code of conduct, um, accountability. Uh, once you have this set standard throughout the entire staff and you get everybody on board, then we can start focusing on how law enforcement is viewed in the public's eyes, public's eyes itself. I got to ask it. Yeah, go ahead. Finger gate. The finger gate. Finger gate. Is the, that what they're the famous, calling it? Well, it's but it, everything is a gate, right? So yeah. it's it's Finger you game. know what I'm talking about, the video. Yes, was... yes. Well, I think constitutional policing, when it comes to um, training itself, I think it's a high priority for me very specifically, amongst other things as far as de-escalation, um, interpersonal communication skills. These, these have to be a high priority. And I'll be honest, I, I make mistakes. Everybody in this room makes mistakes. It's what you – it's how you accept those mistakes – you're accountable for that mistake and what you do in the future. Train on it. If, you, if you're training on constitutional policing, then these little mistakes like this won't happen. I think the, it's mantra of all police departments to, uh, to get out in the public and to work close with the public. Uh, but your predecessor raised this to a new high. He really put a lot of emphasis and engaging on a one-to-one -one with as much of the public as he could. I assume you'll you'll continue this uh, this uh, uh, focus toward engaging. Is there anything else you should do that you would plan to do that George did not do? I, I can't uh, I can't fill the shoes of the great chiefs yeah. before me. Yeah. You know George Swartwood. He's yeah. wonderful with the community. Um, you have Maury Richards, Kevin Miller, Ted Anderson, all these chiefs before me. It's hard to fill those shoes, but you learn from every single one of those chiefs so if i'm taking from george swartwood in particular 
he had a great community presence. Loved everybody. Loved how he, you know, he viewed the schools. He, he viewed the children. Every time he went out, people listened to him. He had a great voice. He really projected his voice very well. A lot of my focus, yes, I love the community. I love getting out there and seeing everybody. And if you guys know me, that's how I am. But there also needs to be a lot of focus on this department. You have, if you if you're cha- you have to be able to change the mentality of this department and its members. Um, you have to get them on board about this community presence. Um, Would you? Would you elaborate on that? That uh, that leaves the impression that the department is having some internal problems. I just don't want that to be a problem. Okay. You have okay. to eliminate everything. Fair just enough. just like in the policing world, you have to eliminate everything, all the possible outcomes or all the possible problems. Um, and I want to make sure that it's not a problem in the department of how why they swore in in the first place, right? Everybody that gets sworn in in the first place, they come up, they raise their hand I swear to protect serve the, the community um, does that change it, it shouldn't change at all and I'm I'm here to make sure that that hasn't changed for all these guys get them back on the same page if they're not and then get that community presence going to let me shift let me shift to Kevin very quickly as the you and your three colleagues were going through the interview process what were you looking for were you looking for a continuation of what was been done in the past? Were you looking for filling a, uh, correcting a problem that you perceived? Were you looking at filling a niche that you, uh, or a, uh, a hole that was, that you perceived to be there? What specifically were you looking for in the candidates? Well, I, I think that, uh, it, you know, you said a few things that probably match up. One of them was, uh, you know, we wanted to have a, a higher level of accountability. Uh, take, f- for instance, the finger gate that you talked about. Uh, that is totally unacceptable. My book, unacceptable. And I think uh, having a conversation with Aaron, uh, that was one of the things that really stood out for him, that it was unacceptable for him, and he was going to continue to, to work on, on making that a better place. Uh, I think um, perception on, on the police force and some of the police officers uh, within the community uh, need to be changed, uh, and I think Aaron has that ability to, to work with those individuals to change that perception. Uh, I think the, the four of us all agreed that it was time for a change. George, you know, George clearly put in for retirement, so we needed to, to, to fill the gap, and, and the gap was, uh, you know, what are, what are we going to do moving forward? Are we going to look for a, a chief that's going to be here three to five years, or are we going to look for someone that, that could be here uh, 10 to 15 years and I think Aaron fills that uh, void also I think that we're going to have we're going to see some uh, continuity and long-term uh, leadership and long-term results with uh, with Aaron taking over the helm. Chief you mentioned a couple of times a phrase I don't hear very often and that is constitutional policing what does that mean as opposed to unconstitutional policing what, what is the phrase? <laughs> well constitutional as long you're saying the guideline is constitutional so uh, search and seizure, um, uh, search and seizure. Uh, how 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 you're speaking to people out in the public? Pretty much, I don't want there to be any question as far as us violating anybody's constitutional gotcha. rights. And if if we're being trained in that aspect, then you can't argue it when it comes. To, either they did violate it or they didn't. Okay. And I want to make sure that they are not violating that. Man, City Manager Mark Baldwin put out in his statement Friday, Chief Gibbons possesses a thorough understanding of critical issues and priorities currently affecting Martinsburg and our police department. I'm confident that Chief Gibbons will implement programs and initiatives that increase public trust, equity, accountability, constitutional policing, and address public safety in our city. Uh, John brought up the word constitutional. I'm going to go with the word equity. Okay, because this has become an interesting word in our current culture right now. So explain to me how you view equity with the police department in the city of Martinsburg and how that would be implemented. Uh, give me a give me an example. Well, it's Mark's statement. He released it in that you would uh, be the person who would be implementing policies of equity, I presume, is what he means well, by I that. Think... So I, I would interpret that as relating to minority members of our community as well. Okay, or fair and impartial. Mm-hmm. You know, being being equal, uh, 
I thrive on being fair and impartial. Everybody in the police department knows I'm very fair and impartial, and I think that has to do with consistency. If you're dealing with somebody out in the public the same way that you deal with a police officer, you're dealing with somebody, a police officer the same way that you deal with somebody in your family. That's that fair and consistent policy that I have to have in my department, and that's where the, the equity comes in. Have you seen an different attitudes toward the police from the citizens of Martinsburg based on race? Occasionally, yes. Yes. And it it could be race. It could be use of force. Um, it could be constitutional policing. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of disparities out here in the in the community that we have to resolve. And in order for us to resolve them, we have to communicate and we have to engage with anybody who has these issues with the police department. Yeah, and, you know, keep in mind, uh, you know, the, the city of Martinsburg uh, is a police force of 50, but we're down to, to 38. So we believe with, the, with the, the implementation of some of the programs and recruiting thoughts and ideas that Aaron has, that we're going to be able to recruit good qualified individuals, hopefully from the minority community, but also that it's very, very, very tough to recruit a police officer. Uh, these days, people don't want to be a police officer based on a lot of the inequity that, that, that you see out there. And, and I think Aaron has the, the ability and the, the temperament and everything to be able to be equal with everybody. And, Let me, ch and changing that perception. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. have to change that perception. I can't tell you all of my ideas for recruitment because then the sheriff's department's going to steal them all or the <laughs> yeah. state police is going to steal them. How, yeah. how many members of the minority community are currently police officers? We have, you know? we have uh, two right now. To, and will you be attempting to actively recruit in, out of the minorities? Minorities community? and females, yes. Correct. Bill? Yeah, I think Rob's question kind of went down the path I was going. Everyone would like to view themselves as fair and impartial. That's just human nature. We're fair and impartial. And in certain, certain elements of our community, that's probably true. There are other elements of our community that do not that do not look at you the same way. Specifically, the black community feel that they are, they have not been treated fair and impartial, yet the white community say they probably have been. Uh, this is not unique to Martinsburg. It's not mm -hmm. unique to Berkeley County. It is a, it is part of our polarized society today. But specifically, how would you reach out and to demonstrate to both parts of our community that you are fair and impartial what specific things can you do well specifically right off the bat it's not just me yeah it's yeah, every yeah, it's every yeah. single one of these patrol guys yeah. that i'm in charge of if if i have a very clear set expectation of being fair and impartial portrayed to these guys and they go out and they they're treating people fair and impartially and i'm keeping track of that by way of body camera audits you know things like this I can see that starting to take shape, and I can see it. I can see it change. I, I it's going to change. It has to change. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, we've talked about you know having meetings with the NAACP and different organizations, church groups, and everything to introduce uh, Aaron, so that they have if any questions that mm -hmm. that they might have of him and the police force, he'd be able to address them and, and follow their thoughts and their ideas. Yeah, uh, we kind of circling around uh, uh, one of the most important criteria of being successful and fair and impartial and that is communication and and the, the ability to reach out to these communities and to have a serious two-way dialogue of communication we tend to talk we don't listen as much yeah and, and i agree and, I, and they have a the police department has a very robust uh, facebook page their their website is very friendly friend uh, user friendly so uh, I, I think that plus the face-to-face -face meetings that, that Aaron has been planning on over the next few months, I, I think we're going to start to see that change. At least that's our hopes. Yeah. Aaron Gibbons is our guest here, new chief of police in the city of Martinsburg. Uh, Aaron, are there any infrastructure changes or upgrades that need to be made in the city of Martinsburg Police Department? Well, 21st century policing is, is, is always a must. We're not going to go to a completely drone police force, but... Um, we always have to stay up to date with everything around us. Um, and that, that includes everything from our computer systems to um, software, hardware, um, how we view the city. So for example, we'd like to implement some more cameras so we can keep an eye on specific areas of the city that are 
um, issue ridden areas such as vehicle accidents there's a lot of accidents down in the square over by um, raleigh and king we're trying to get some camera systems set up in those areas um, but yes you have to stay stay up with 21st century police. mari hold on a second, Bill. Yeah. mari richards was very big on drug the drug house ordinance and we would get a press release every time another drug house uh, uh, quote unquote was uh taken down uh, George was not big on that publicity. I have no idea if he was as active doing that as Maury or not because he didn't publicize it. What would be your approach to that sort of thing? I do like the fact that um, Swartwood, when he came into uh, the chief of police position, I do like the fact that he had changed the drug house ordinance um, in a sense. So he had changed it not so much as you would immediately blast it all over the, the media, who these... Uh, property owners were so immediately in the past when Maury was here he would blast them all over the paper and just now you're giving them now you're giving them a chance you know that's what that's I do like the fact that George came in you have these good conversations and I've sat in a lot of those conversations where these property owners are coming in and they're addressing these issues and you give them a time and a date that they have to address these issues by yeah I think that's the difference between uh, you know a George and a Maury more Maury didn't give the opportunity of a of a, a landlord to to address it. He just blasted it right in the, into his report, and right into the paper, which to me was totally unfair. Yeah, you mentioned drones a while ago, Chief. Uh, do <laughs> yeah, do we though. use drones, or is there a plan to use drones for crime prevention? Um, there isn't a plan to use drones right now. We I did have an officer uh, look into it here about a year and a half ago, and it was extremely expensive. Just getting the FAA license itself, um, that is always an option. It would be it would be a great resource to have. How would the community receive that? Good question. It is a good question. They may see, other than the price, yeah. that might be perce perceived as well. Big Brother. Exactly right. That's what I was going to. Yeah, it could serve. A and great, that, so you have to be really careful. Yeah, when it, it comes. It would to serve that. a more real time than what cameras would uh, in these sites. But extremely I, I, helpful at times. Yeah, yes. extremely. Helpful. But I think there would be a perception among the community of Big Brother watching. So yeah, I think right. it's more important that uh, you know the police get out of their car. They. They interact with people yeah. in the neighborhoods. They yeah, you can't interact with a drone. I know that's that right. much. Uh, final thoughts, Kevin, Aaron? Well, I, I could tell you that this, this is a great day for, for the city of Martinsburg to be able to, to have a, a new chief. Of, uh, uh, I'm not taking away from any of the other chiefs, but I think Aaron's going to be here for a long, long time. And, and I told him, I said, I'm, I'm glad to be part of the, the journey for the last 15 years with him, and I'm looking forward to the journey moving forward. Aaron? I, I really appreciate all the time and energy that the city officials have put into electing, appointing me as the chief of police position. Um, I can't say how, how important it is for me, not just as the chief of police, but as, you know, my wife owns a business, I'm always out here in the community, to, but, but to be able to serve the community as chief of police exceptionally i'm exceptionally proud of that fact and i appreciate everybody very much congratulations again aaron thank you kevin thanks so much we appreciate it thank you and we